Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Honda, and I'm checking out a 2018 Honda Accord in the Sport trim level. Now, a lot of people online are talking about the Sport as well as just the Accord in general because you're able to have a four-door sedan with a manual transmission, also a turbocharged engine with three different powertrain options. So let's go ahead and check it out. This Accord is sitting on 235 40 Goodyear Eagle Touring tires wrapped around 19 inch alloy wheels and a two tone, a sporty looking two tone. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Platinum White Pearl. And I always love a pearl coat in white. Let's see if we can get a good shot of it here with the sun. Hopefully the camera is doing it justice, but white colors in general sometimes help out with showing off the style of the vehicle. So in this case, it makes this little portion right here under the fog lights a little bit more prominent right there. That little portion kind of stands out to me. Now you have a gloss black grill with the little Honda sensing sensor right in the center portion. It actually says Honda Sensing on it. This is a standard feature on all the Accords, and I think they wanted to make sure that everybody sees that little sensing right there. So that's why it's in that position and not maybe, say, behind the Honda badge. You can see this one has like a little three-dimensional look to it. It's not flat like some of the others. So you can see this chrome is kind of like a smoked chrome across the front starts from one headlight all the way to the other and it thickens in the middle but it's smoked on this particular trim instead of the normal chrome now the headlights are powered by leds so this one has in the sport model it has six little reflector LED housings here for your low beams and then your high beams are powered by halogen bulb in a larger reflector housing. The turn signals and the daytime running lights are also powered by LEDs. The fog lights are in a projector, four little projector lenses powered by LEDs as well. This is what the key looks like and it's a proximity key with the lock and unlock button, the ability to open up the trunk, and the panic button there at the bottom. Now this is a proximity key inside the vehicle, so you still have to use the remote here, lock and unlock to access the vehicle. Um, other than that, once you get in the vehicle, it does have a push button start, so you can start it up and go. So let's go ahead and push the panic button, listen to the horn and all that. Seems, a little, seems like a stronger horn this year. Okay, looking at the profile of the vehicle, one of the first things that pops out is the wheels. I really like the wheels in the sport model. Same thing with previous years as well. Okay, so the door handles are body colored, so they're, they're solid white in this particular case. And then you have the bottom portion of the side mirror is black and then the top portion is white, It's pretty cool. Now the little mud flaps here and here are black, which is separate, kind of standing out from the vehicle. And of course, right in this, this pillar right here, the B pillar is blacked out to kind of give it a sleek design. And then there's a subtle use of chrome, that smoked chrome across the top of the windows, which is really nice. Okay, so let's start here on the passenger side. Check it out. Okay, so here's the inside of the passenger side door. Soft to the touch surfaces here, here, and here. And this is kind of like a vinyl surface with the contrast stitching around your arm. Up here is kind of like a uh, Nerf material. It's soft to the touch, but uh, it has that simulated leather texturing. And it's comfortable, especially when you're leaning your, your arm on it. And then right in the, this area, it kind of it has this accent that kind of reminds me of carbon fiber. It doesn't really look exactly like carbon fiber, but it just kind of has that style, I guess. And also, this is another thing I like. The handle 
right in here and then it goes across uh, it's all kind of blended in in that chrome color so that way the handle kind of blends in with the style and doesn't like stand out as this you know big chrome handle or whatever really looks good the handle right here for closing your door is uh, all sealed up so you could use it as a pocket and then you have the storage pockets down here with a bottle holder all hard plastics down here durable most of the interior is black in this vehicle so the seats have a cloth like a microfiber cloth here in the center portion and then a what i think is a synthetic leather material here on the ends with the contrast stitching so it has that leather traditional leather texture but this is very soft smooth microfiber material and it has a little stripes in there looking nice manually adjusted seats here on the passenger side there's your leg room very little tapering but just wide open space for your legs really wide i mean hopefully the camera does it justice but uh there's lots of room in this vehicle okay so it has a soft touch dash up in here and then more of that carbon fiber ish design there on the dash which is looking nice and then it's kind of underlined by a, that metallic finish which is throughout the vehicle looking good okay so let's look at the uh, glove compartment it's a locking glove compartment smooth plastic on the inside Okay, looking on the inside of the back door, the only portion that is soft to the touch is around your arm. So right in here and here, soft to the touch. Up in here, you have the hard plastics, here and here and down here. Uh, this is basically the same as some of the other uh, trim levels, where it's just black. There's none of that um, particular trim or whatever right there it's just a black surface like a matte black but i do like the way they take that metallic piece there and blend in the handle this is sealed up so you can use it as a pocket and then you have that large pot especially for a back door this is a really large pocket all right so looking at the back seat here now it's basically a bench seat it does have a little bit of bolstering just to kind of add to the comfort and simulate a bucket seat i suppose now it can fit three passengers if you move this armrest and cup holder out of the way and it has that same you know leather synthetic leather and cloth in the center portion and even with the seats all the way back you still have a tremendous amount of leg room and the, and the floor goes down quite a ways so it kind of gives you that sitting in the chair feel does have a hump here in the center so the center passenger will have to deal with that and then you have a little storage pocket there in the center you have a pocket on the back of the passenger seat this right here but not on the driver's seat Okay, so making our way around to the back of the vehicle. It has the body colored shark fin antenna there at the top. Your third brake light is right in here, powered by LEDs. And your tail lights are combination, powered by a combination of LEDs and standard bulbs. Now this one has a deck lid spoiler, which is pretty cool. And it's also body colored. And it's a subtle spoiler. It's not like it's uh, too tacky or anything. Backup camera. It's a little bit offset right in here. And check it out. You have the exhaust around is in chrome. So dual 
it's not true dual exhaust it actually splits in the in the middle there which you probably saw in the beginning of the video but it does have a really cool sporty look back here okay so opening up the trunk there is no button to open up the trunk underneath that honda emblem uh some of like say the touring has a button under here but this one there's no button so we're going to use the remote control there's also a button next to the driver's seat which you could push but we're going to go ahead and use the remote press and hold it kind of pops up right there and then we can lift it up now just to show you what i'm talking about this is what's under here there's a little light right there but there's no button okay so when that goes up all the way you see how far it gets out of your way which is nice and this one has the cargo mat in place which is highly recommended you have a little bag holders and such there on the side on both sides you can also put a net pocket across there if you wanted to now the back seats fold down and the release for them is here and here because it's a 60 40 split so we can fold down one seat or the other or both depending on our needs and this gives us the ability to maintain some passenger space while adding to our cargo space okay so let's lift up this cargo mat underneath it is a little strap under here lift that up and this is where you'll find the tools for your spare tire with a little funnel there which i'll explain what that's for in just a few minutes now let's lift this up now we can see our spare tire so it's a little compact spare tire but it gives you something a little bit of space around it i guess you could use that for some a little bit of a cargo space i guess the fuel door is here on the driver's side and it's a locking fuel door so right now it's locked if we want to unlock it all we have to do is push the unlock button unlock button here on the remote or just simply unlock the vehicle and not only does it unlock the doors but it also unlocks your fuel door which will lock and unlock and you don't have to worry about it it'll just as you secure the vehicle this will also be secured so it has a capless design so you don't have to worry about a cap you don't have to have the, get your hands dirty and, or whatever you just put the nozzle in there pump the gas and you're good to go now that little funnel i mentioned that is for if you need to use a gas can uh, you will need to use that funnel to get the gas to go in the tanks so this is actually uh, more than one door that it has to go into but um, pretty simple okay to start it up you just have the key inside the vehicle it could be in your pocket it could be in a bag or whatever put your foot on the brake and push this button Okay, so here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat, and you can see the floor mat hooks in place in two places. And here's your accelerator and brake pedal and footrest in a sporty metallic design or aluminum design. Now, I just want to mention uh, somebody in the past didn't understand that these actually have rubber on them, so your foot's not going to slip off. The metal is in the back, so these are raised rubber pedals, so it's not a it's not a dangerous situation to have these uh, but anyways let's go ahead and take a look under the hood to raise the hood there is a latch in the very center position here and you just move it to the left and lift the hood up there's the latch right there and it does require a prop but it's not a very heavy hood and it does require a prop to hold it up right here and there's actually two places Here's your normal place, which has a little uh, cut out for it. But there's also a little secret place down here, and that's the one I'm going to use. So you can see when you use that secret place to hold the prop, hold the hood with the prop, it lifts the hood way higher than a normal hood would lift up. So that way you can, gives it really good access to the engine compartment. This is really helpful when filming, in my case, so let's look at the 
engine compartment here. So insulated firewall in the back. The strut towers are braced in with the ace body structure here, stabilizing them. It also has an insulated battery. Okay, so this is a 1.5 liter four cylinder engine. So it's an inline four going this way. It's a front wheel drive vehicle. The exhaust is out of the front and the intake manifold is here in the back. Now it does have a turbocharger and the turbocharger is here in the front. So you'll notice the fresh air comes in here, goes through the turbocharger, it compresses the air. So it kind of pushes the air into the engine. It actually goes down. There's an intercooler in the front of the radiator under here. So we're gonna actually see it. Yeah, there it is. It goes through that intercooler, comes up and around here and into the intake in the back. So it's a little bit different than your normal, since it has the uh, turbocharger, it's a little bit different design, but a little bit further travel. But it does help out with pumping out the 192 horsepower that this engine is capable of. It also is a direct injection VTEC turbocharged engine. It's pretty cool, a lot of technology to make up for this small displacement engine. Now, of course, you can get a 2.0 liter. You can also get this in a hybrid, which is neat. Now, this is this particular one is paired to a CVT automatic transmission, but you can get a manual transmission if you'd like. Now, if you get the 2.0 liter, you, you can also get a 10 speed automatic transmission as an option as well. The inside of the driver's side door is just like the passenger side, except for it has a few more buttons. So there's your power window controls. I like the way they have a little metallic accent around the outside, just so you can find them a little bit easier uh, and they kind of stand out. One touch up and down. Door lock controls, side mirrors are adjusted here. Ability to open up the trunk. Okay, so it has a power seat here for the driver. So they have the up and down, tilt, forward and back, and there's the tilt the back, and then it has a four-way lumbar adjustment, which is really nice. To the left of the steering column, you have a few buttons here. There's your reset your trip, your dimmer switch for your interior gauges. Down here is your Honda sensing. When you push that, it'll pull up your Honda Sensing options on your screen, which we'll get into in a minute. And this is your traction control. You can turn that off. Default will always be on unless you turn it off. It also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column. Look how easy column. You know what? Sometimes you have to reach in and try to find the, the lever for that, but this one's right there on the side. It's easy to see. It's easy to feel uh, on the left side. You can tilt and telescope it and lock it in place easy as well. Okay, so let's take a look here on the inside, sitting in the driver's seat, checking it out. You notice that the door contours with the dashboard there. Then you have that metallic accent kind of outlining everything, which is really neat. Okay, so I have the seat all the way back and all the way down, and I'm six feet tall. This is a little bit further back than what I would actually drive. Uh, just to give you an idea of the possible leg room here and the knee room. Okay, so it's a leather wrapped steering wheel. And it's that smooth leather. It doesn't have that traditional leather texture. Uh, sort of like this simulated leather texture. It doesn't have that. It's more of a smooth leather, but it's not slick or anything. It is a little bit soft to the touch. Um, but the thickness helps out with it digging into your into your bones there. And you have that metallic accent here on the steering wheel as well, as well as the paddle shifters in the back is that same color. 
Okay, so you have your cruise control here on the right side, and it's an adaptive cruise control. It also has a lane keeping assist feature. So all these could be turned on. You can also set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you by pushing this button, and it cycles through these little bars here. And I'm not sure if those are car lengths or just a, you know, just a visual representation of distance relative to other distances. I think it might depend on speed as far as that goes. Um, but the, the adaptive cruise control and the whole Honda sensing thing, standard on the Honda Accord in the 18 model, which is fantastic. Okay, on the left side is your Bluetooth controls, your phone, answer, hang up, voice recognition button here. Volume for your radio, change through your tracks on your radio. And then this home, this little house, and this scroll wheel, and then there's a button that you push here and a back button. This corresponds with the screen next to the gauges here, or the actual part of the gauges. I'll show you in a second what I'm talking about. Windshield wipers here on the right side. Turn signals over here with your headlight controls. So you have automatic, you have off parking light, uh, parking lights, automatic, and then on and then your fog lights are controlled here separately okay so looking at the gauges so really simple easy to read it's outlined in white has the white lettering and the black background is popping through making it um, you know easy to focus on especially when you're trans transferring your eyes from the, the a bright road or whatever a road and you're you're transitioning to the gauges and back and forth just makes it easy to see and 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 everything okay so on the far left is your engine coolant temperature and then next would be your rpms on the far right is your fuel gauge and then your speedometer but right there in the center portion is some more information so the thing about this screen is from here over is all digital this is actually a digital portion this is a physical gauge on the right side this is a digital representation of a gauge so it's kind of hard to tell until you look at it a little bit closer that that is not a physical gauge the reason why is that way you have more information that can go in that spot so I'm going to use this, these buttons right here, this little scroll wheel, this home button, and the back button, the, and I'm gonna make selections by pushing in on this little scroll wheel. Okay, so first I'm going to push the home button, and it pulls up these options. So I have the tachometer, range and fuel, so I'm gonna go through them one at a time. So we saw the tachometer, let's go to range and fuel, go back out of that, speed and time, select that, Go back out of that, and then the audio, which is whatever your radio is doing. Phone, caller ID and stuff like that will show there. Traffic signs, uh, so this will show your speed limit. Uh, driving support, this will show your adaptive cruise, cruise control as well as your uh, lane keeping assist system. Driver attention, this is give you reminders, hey, maybe it's time to take a break, you know, if you're swerving around on the road or something. Uh, maintenance, time to change the oil, oil life. Next one is your safety support. So this is your Honda Sensing, and this would be similar to pushing that Honda Sensing button where it gives you the options for your forward collision uh, mitigation system and also your road departure mitigation. So we can select that and we can turn those on and off. So we have the uh, road departure mitigation and then the collision mitigation braking system. We could turn those off if we wanted to. All right, let's go back out of that. Warnings. So this would be uh, anything that you know, like sort of like a check engine light type of deal. And it goes back to your tachometer. Now you can turn on. You notice that when you go through that, the tachometer disappears. But you can turn on the tachometer and have the information in the center portion of the tachometer in the settings in this screen. So if that's how you want to do it. Now it's going to make everything smaller and fit in there. Uh, but, you know, that's something that you could turn on or off depending on your, your desire, your preferences. Okay. 
Okay, so here's your touch screen. Check out the clarity. I don't know if my camera is picking it up, but the clarity, the colors, everything is really sharp uh, on the touch screen. Now it does have physical buttons here on the outside. Traditional volume, and then a selector knob there on that side. Um, so right now we're in the home screen. So the home screen gives us access to a lot of the main features. We can customize it, um, whatever we want on these. It's kind of like a cell phone, I guess, nowadays, because that's what everybody's accustomed to using, kind of these little apps. And then you can, you know, customize it. You could choose the apps that you want in here. We can also move them around. So let's say we want to put that one uh, down here. We could do that. Okay, so... Looking at the, the different options here, smartphone connection is for your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto uh, connection. So you just plug in your cell phone in the USB and it'll step you through that, install the software, and you'll be able to use those features. Settings, AM, FM. Let's actually look at that screen. Uh, you have your presets there at the very bottom and then you can um, you know, you choose options on your sound. Let's get back out of that. All right, went too far back. Okay, so uh, your Bluetooth audio, your FM, your phone. You have little little quick links up there. And let's go back home. Bluetooth audio. There's nothing paired right now, but that gives you that option. We don't have it. Uh, your phone, same thing. There's nothing paired, so it's not going to show anything. Once you do pair your phone, you have access to your phone. Your, you can use your voice to make calls, that kind of stuff. And you have a trip computer here check that out and you have trip a trip B text messages once you pair your phone you have access to um, text messages that will you know show up on the screen and also read them to you and you can respond by using your voice so that way you don't have to you know fumbling around your phone and and possibly get an accident USB so this is where you plug in a device in your USB port and it'll show up here uh, so like say I'm pretty sure you can view images, but you can also, of course, play music off of your USB drive. AM, FM, uh, system updates, clock, Honda Link, well, this is a app through your cell phone. And I like this too, it has just a compass there. Pretty simple. All right, you also could push this button. When we push that button, it gives us the time and date and a background image. Now. I haven't tried it, but I'm pretty sure you can use an image off of your USB drive to change the background, kind of like a wallpaper on your cell phone or, or your desktop, your computer. And uh, so when you have this screen up, you'll have, you can customize the image. But I like this because sometimes you're just, you just want to focus on the time and date. You don't want all the other stuff on the, on the screen. And this gives you a very large, easy to read readout of your time and date. So just in case you need that. You know, you're, you're running late for work, you really want to focus on the time, this would be a, a good option here. And then, of course, you have the physical buttons for ones we've already seen. Now, your audio source, AM, you have your FM, AM, USB, audio, and smartphone. Just kind of a quick reference there. You can make selections with this knob, so you can go up and down, um, or you can just push the button. All right. Four-way flashers here and dual zone climate control. So you have your driver and passenger temperatures. You can have them separate or you can sync them by pushing that button. Now they'll both be the same. It'll also kind of give you an idea of what's going on up here at the top. It's gonna to make that bar go away while you adjust it. And then when you stop, then it'll, the bar will pop back up there with the information that's typically up there. Fan speed is here in the center where you want the air to blow front and rear defrosters, air conditioning, and de you recirculate the air as well. All right, so down here, this pops up. This is where you'll find your USB port for your cell phone connection. So your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you would plug it in there. There's a 12 volt power supply, and then there's a big place down here to put your cell phone. And you can actually close this up. It's big enough where you can put it in there and close this up, so that way it's out of the way and uh, you're not tempted to pick it up while you're driving or whatever. And also it has this rubber portion there in the bottom. It's like a little rubber pad at the bottom 
just to help you clean it out and everything. And also it keeps the cell phone from sliding around. It's pretty grippy. All right, cup holders are here. Now you notice it's open all the way across here in the center. Uh, so that way you can utilize the space for more than just cups. And then when you have cups in here, you can put different size cups because these little articulating arms here. Okay, so you have a leather wrapped shift knob that's looking pretty cool. This portion is like a synthetic material, but this is a leather wrapping. Let's go ahead and put it in reverse. Check out the backup camera. It has the active guidelines. So as I turn the steering wheel, it'll turn the uh, guidelines as well. Also has different views. So right now it's a very wide, wide uh, view. Now you can see the distortion because the bumper is curved. But this gives you the best visibility as far as just seeing what's behind you. You can get a more linear look uh, by pushing that button. You notice there's still some distortion, but it's a little bit uh, less less distorted, I should say. And then right here is a kind of a top-down view, and you can see directly what's down on the ground behind you. So, pretty cool. And then there's neutral, drive. That's your normal drive position. Of course, you can use your paddle shifters and change through the gear, the speed ratios, since it's a main uh, cvt transmission you have sport mode and eco so sport mode would be your you know performance so we put it in drive um if we push the the paddle shifters right now nothing's going to happen we go ahead and put the sport button and when we do that check it out it changes the screen looks pretty cool so let me do that again turn that off push it again so now we have the boost pressure for the turbo right there and then the RPMs there and now we can use the paddle shifter. So um, as soon as I touch, we don't have to use a paddle shifter in sport mode, but now that I touched the paddle shifter, uh, it's going to allow me to shift through the, the speed ratios. And see now, so you notice it changed to manual one. If we want to get out of that, of course, we just push the sport button and it turns sport off and it goes back into the normal drive. So normally, if you don't have sport mode on, if you push the paddle shifters, it's not going to be a big deal. It's not going to change the speed ratios or anything. Okay, electronic parking brake. We pull it up to engage it. It has a little light to let you know it's engaged. And as long as you put your foot on the brake, you can push it down to disengage it. Brake hold feature. Um, when you push that and have this turned on, when you come to a complete stop at a stop light or whatever, or a stop sign for extended period of time, it's gonna hold the vehicle there until you push the accelerator and then it'll release the brake. So that way you don't have to hold the brake the whole time you're sitting in traffic or whatever. Okay, so armrest. A little bit soft to the touch. I mean, it's soft to the touch, but it's not super cushy. It's, it's kind of firm has a stitching there on that side and it's wide enough to you can share it with your passenger I suppose and it lifts up I like the way it just stays wherever you put it to so anywhere you rest it it just stays in that position I wish doors were like that uh, I know some cars have that feature where you you open the door and it just kind of stays in that position instead of um, you know only set positions but I like that that feature and it doesn't go back that far so I mean, it just goes back to right there, which is a little bit of an issue for me. And then a little tray, this rubberized tray that's here at the top that's removable. And here's a storage compartment, pretty good size. And you have a 12 volt power supply in there. And you have the ability to, uh, there's a little felt lining at the very bottom that you can take out and clean and put it back in. Now you could put wires in and out of this compartment so you could plug something in and here in the front portion, right where the handle is, right in here, right in there, the, the wires could go in and out of this compartment. You can kind of feel uh, where it's open. But that's how you can put the wires through without pinching them. Okay, so the rear view mirror is a manual day and night mode. Tap lights here. Place to put your sunglasses with a foam background and then smooth plastic here. Big, very big compartment for 
for Hollywood sunglasses. And this button, I was gonna wait till the night video to show this off, but because it's kind of hard to show at daytime, but it's really it's really cool. So there's these little there's these little holes right here. And when you push this button, when you push that button, little lights turn on. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little light that shines. It's a very, very soft ambient kind of moonlight light. So it illuminates the inside of the just kind of in the center of the vehicle without really, you could just leave it on and it's not going to cause a problem, blind you or anything, but it kind of helps you get your bearings at nighttime. Now everything, all the buttons are backlit, but it just kind of, you know, helps out with visibility. And I wanted to show this, I'm going to show it off at night, but just want to mention that's pretty cool. And hopefully you can see that. That's, that's what that little button does. All right, the visors have mirrors and lights in them on both sides, and they also extend out. Okay, so let's look at the visibility in the back. So you have the, of course, the big rear window and little windows behind the back seats, which are nice, but overall pretty good. And your backup camera also helps out with that. All right, there you have it, 2018 Honda Accord Sport. Now this one has the 1.5 liter. Uh, you can also get a manual transmission. You can get the 2.0. I mean, there's a lot of different options, but this is how this one's configured. And shortly in a few seconds, I will show you the window sticker and you can kind of see what this particular vehicle has. So anyways, thank you for watching and thank you to East Coast Honda here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Thank you to them, thank you to you, and I'll see you guys next time.